good morning y'all um this one's a bit odd but um was super cool because uh uh it's it worked it worked uh, as, as far as how much it helped with like speed quarter mile whatever we'll get into that eventually but um so in this video i'm going to be uh showing you all of the crap that i went through to do a one-piece drive shaft now i know before i get my head bit off People, I got a lot of crap for this in the OBS forums and the OBS pages, uh, um, all those social media, because as soon as I mentioned it for an extended cab C1500, um, they were like, no, you, you can't do that. That's stupid. Your drive shaft's just going to, you know, turn into a W and then exit left. And I'm like, OK, I understand that if it was the wrong dimensions, but some people just aren't open minded to even think that it's possible or even up with the times, honestly, because that's a really common mod for extended cabs of the newer 2015 ish and up even a little lower so um it kind of happened it was a, a accident um didn't plan on it uh so all i did was you know the truck itself had a whole bunch of rust at the bottom um i was still in the process and even still am i try to tackle things before they actually become a problem so that i'm doing it on my time not you know it happening whenever it happens and now i'm working around it so anyway um so the plan was to take the drive shaft out um i can do u-joints myself i can clean it up i can paint it myself but the one thing i wanted to do i'm like you know what let me take it to somebody and actually have them rebalance it even though it didn't feel bad rebalance it along with u-joints and cleaning it up so um i went to a guy uh RVT built, go follow his channel. Uh, he was the one who even told me about the guy that was out the Sharon Hill area in PA, kind of like going towards Darby. And um, apparently like he, he was super legit and I did my homework and he is and was. So um, went to him, uh, he worked on a truck pro down in that area and uh, talked to him about what I wanted to do. And then he introduced the idea of a one piece drive shaft. Now, mind you, I, at this point, I went in there with zero intention of having a one-piece drive shaft. And um, he explained it. At first, I was a bit iffy myself, but then he explained that, yeah, it's definitely possible. I've done it plenty of times, all different applications. He was like, I can definitely, we can get it done. And he was like, it'll be like, you're riding on a cloud, you'll love it. So I'm like, hmm, okay, sounds like money to me. But I mean, I said that to myself. So I was like, okay, well, you know what? Um, I'll do the measurements that you need. I'll bring them back to you and, uh, you know, get a parts list together. Let me know how much it's going to be. Uh, that didn't happen. Um, I want to say he called me about a week and a half later and I saw it. And I'm like, oh, yes. All right, finally, you know. And so I answered the phone and I'm expecting him to say, oh, okay, hey, uh, you know, um, so this is what we're looking at. And then give me a price. No. He called me and he said, hey, uh, hey, how's it going? Um, just let you know your drive shaft's ready to pick up. And I'm like, whoa, pick up. Well, we didn't talk about anything. I don't even know how much I owe you. So anyway, um, tried to make the best of the situation. Um, talked about it. I let him know, like, hey, you know, you didn't call me. So um, I went down to go look at it. And I mean, dude, like it was beautiful. I, I At least to me, the girth... I mean, it's almost six inches in diameter. It's about 5.75 inches in diameter. And I wanna say about 79, 78-ish in length, even though it's taboo to go over 78, I believe is what was said. But um, hey, it, it worked out. So anyway, um, this is pretty much the crap that I went through to try to get it in the car and go from there. And uh I want to say that it definitely helped me out as far as weight wise, because I wish before I got rid of some of the things and I actually may still have them. I wanted to weigh everything that came out compared to the weight of this drive shaft. This drive shaft probably weighs one fourth of what came out of this truck. So, um, yeah, it, it and I'm curious to see how it helped me out later on down the line, but we'll see. So, I mean, just look at it. Bear with me because some of these shots were at night and once again who's always the fool trying to work on their daily that has to go to work in a couple of days me so i was under the gun some of these shots are going to be at night um but just take whatever info you can in case you actually end up planning on wanting to do it could you get away with a two-piece and be absolutely fine hell yeah you can but i just felt like you know what i guess it's my opportunity to do something different and it might benefit me so here we go all right folks so 
I was already previously under here. They definitely have uh, quite a few videos um, on YouTube that explain how to measure for the drive shaft. And um, that part I already did uh, way prior to today. Now, my goal is right now, since I've already measured um, for the one piece drive shaft, is to get these supports out. Um, this one support here, this is um, this pretty much holds the carrier bearing that joins um, the two shafts together because with an extended cab, of course, like you know, you already know, it's a two piece drive shaft. Um, the rear portion of the drive shaft is what articulates. The front portion uh, does not move at all. It's mounted in this bracket, those two bolts, and on the top of being mounted in that bracket, um, it goes straight to the transmission. So this front shaft does not articulate at all. Um, but in order to do a one piece, uh, I'm honestly not sure. I mean, I do think that there is going to be some clearance issues here on um, this support right under the front portion. I think there may be some clearance issues because my drive shaft that I have that's made is almost six inches in diameter, which it has to be when you're going that long in a drive shaft, um, especially because you'll end up hitting your critical speed pretty quick if it's not uh, pretty much thick enough to uh, handle that type of uh, centrifugal force. So, well, I'm, let me correct that, centrifugal speed. And this center one is gonna just have to come out, period. So uh, in order to do that though, um, there's not much info online at all, which is one of the reasons why I'm even making this video for the people dumb enough to actually want to do this. Um, what I'm gonna do is keep things pretty much where I can put it back if something does not work out. So in order to do that for starters, <laughs> these are riveted in. There's rivets here that hold these in. So it's not like you can just unbolt them and take them out which is the point of why i'm under here as we speak i'm gonna get a uh cutoff wheel i have a grinder with a cut disc um i'm gonna cut across in these and once i cut across in them i'm gonna uh chisel off the top once the top's chiseled off uh hopefully get a punch tap it out um and at that point go to lowe's home depot whatever and find what bolts fit in here the best with the least amount of play so that's the plan as of right now. And I have to do that with this uh, carrier bearing support. And I have to do that uh, with this uh, support bar here. And the goal of the support bar, I'm honestly not sure if it's actually here for structural integrity of the frame. Or, I mean, it pretty much acts like a drive shaft loop if anything was to fail with the factory drive shaft. If something was to fail from the front so that you don't pull vault, it's going to drop right on to that bar. So I'm thinking there's a possibility that that's what it's there for. It's just literally a, a drive shaft loop, but not a loop. It's just a bar. So uh, let's start uh, getting these ends off. punch um i mean i got a bunch of them but this is the one that i chose double punch and i have this chisel which i don't believe is not for this but it's the closest thing i have to a chisel at the moment i'm not sure if it's gonna be enough to actually like get this off i may have to do some more cutting to actually you know get it loose
Okay, so things didn't go as planned. Uh, I mean, maybe if I'd put more, I don't know, effort into mastering that form of technique, which was cutting the cross into the uh, rivet and then trying to hit it off with like a chisel or something like that form. Um, maybe I kind of could have got it to work better. So I just broke out a small pancake. Um, where I'm working at, not the best of conditions, not the nicest of people around me. Um, so I kind of try to not make as much, try not to make as much noise as possible. Uh, so a couple quick hits with the air hammer uh, did get these two out. Um, I am gonna go back and show um, pretty much what I had to do. Um, I'm going to demonstrate it on these. Um, crappy part is it's loose, it's flapping up and down, but the problem is the actual rivets themselves are still inside of the actual plate itself. So I think to get enough force to get that out, I'm gonna have to take the whole thing out and then hit it uh, by itself. Cause right now, as I'm hitting it with the air hammer, it's just vibrating this and it's not actually taking the impact. So um, yeah, so that's probably what I have to do. But first let me um, go over, I guess, how I'm actually gonna do this here. All right, so kind of starting off how I started off before. Um, I actually feel comfortable taking this one completely out, no problem. So I'm gonna get all of these out and then take this bar out, probably take it with me to Home Depot, Lowe's, whatever, to get the exact uh, inner diameter. I mean, if I had something to measure it on me, then, I mean, maybe I will, whatever. About as deep as they're getting um i decided to clean the surface as you can see um clean the surface so i could kind of have a better look at what's going on and not have the black whatever kind of kicking all over and crap so <clears throat> yeah now i try to get this stuff off um last time when i did i just started cutting as much as i could so i guess i'll just continue to do that after i cut the cross have to take a flat wheel uh pretty much cut it down uh, as far as i can get it flat wise i'm gonna just have to take a flat wheel and um pretty much keep going over it until i wear down the material okay switch the heads go from there so another reason I cleaned it up is because that black stuff is starting to actually cake up the pad on here. Not sure if it's focusing or not, but it's caking up the pad. So to avoid that and taking more time, it's another reason I cleaned up the surface before anything this time around. This is where I got them down to. It's kind of actually hard to see it, but there is an indentation there um, where you can actually see the, I guess the shape of the rivet. So now I'm gonna just take a shot at it and get the air hammer and try to get it out. Let's 
again. Finally got it. Jeez Louise. So I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. Go on this one first and foremost. Alright, y'all, fast forward quite a bit of time. Um as you can see, uh I got the front bar out. The one that I believe, like I said, might have been the um what is that? Uh might have been from the factory, like a drive shaft safety type type of thing. But this is where it was. Both of these here, um, you can see they're gone. Uh, yeah, I saw how I removed them, kind of gave me a bit of trouble, but once I got a system down with the tools I had, uh, I flew through the ones on the other side. So um, as of right now, now that I got that out, uh, I also got this one out. And you can tell because now there's grade eight bolts holding it in. So I'm going to keep the uh, centerpiece. Um, just in case anything was to ever go wrong, or let's just say, I don't know, I'm at the track and something happens with the drive shaft, for the time being to get around, I'll be able to just put the factory two piece back in with the center support. Um, I probably will clean this up at some point in the future, but since I'm crushed for time right now, uh, I'm not gonna clean this one up. Um, I did clean up the other one, uh, completely hit it. Um, Grounded it down, got it smooth, well, smooth as I can get it, hit it with some roll bar chassis paint, and it'll look a bit better. So, drive shaft is in. Um, it, it actually came out perfect because it has just the right amount of engagement inside the transmission and the suspension in the rear is at full hang so now with me explaining that um uh this is the bar that i was saying that i had cleaned up um just uh wire wheeled it down i uh, used some uh black vht uh roll bar and chassis paint and uh painted that up just to protect it for the future now here's the good news um i actually did not have to relocate this bar but what i did do is i flipped it i'm not sure if the camera or you'll be able to tell by the camera but it's kind of bulging a bit and bulkier on the bottom side than it is the top side it actually was vice versa it was flipped the opposite way um from the factory so i flipped it and that got me the clearance that you see here truthfully Maybe I could have got away with not even flipping it at all. Maybe. But this here, I feel very comfortable now that I have flipped it. And um, also, it's, like I said, it's removable. Uh, the grade 8 bolts, um, they're in. Uh, they're tight. I got grade 8 bolts. Uh, probably don't need grade 8, but washers um, on both sides. And a lock washer added on top. So um, those are tight. Um, I definitely do not recommend removing this because if it's one thing that I just came to find come to find out I'm just gonna follow my gut. I definitely think that this is necessary um, For the structural integrity of the truck, maybe um, You can probably do something else you got more radical defabrication, but I think that it's necessary uh, as far as critical speed um, like I had said before this drive shaft with my current setup 390 gear uh, 4060E, 28 inch tires. Uh, I can go about 125 miles an hour and be okay. Anything over that, I'm not thinking it, that's going to be a good choice. So that's good for me because 125, that's a 10 second pass. I am so far away from a 10 second pass. But um, yeah, I mean, starting to come together. 
All right, just figured I'd give you guys a look at the other end. I mean, nothing special other than, I mean, this thing is definitely uh, got some girth to it, for real. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's in. I, um, but, yeah, man, this thing, is, this thing is serious. And I saved a significant amount of weight. That's another thing. I... 40 pounds? At least? It's nuts. You don't expect it, but, yeah, like 40 pounds. Uh, weight shed, rotational uh, weight gone. So that's a plus. Okay, people, here's the one thing that I didn't consider. Um, I'm in the process of mocking it up. I went under um, and had to remove that from under the body of the cab. Now, it's kind of like I want to say mid to rear cab where it's located, but you'll see those two marks. And then once you see those two marks, now you see those two marks. So it was just barely scraping it. But the thing is, I don't want it to become a major problem. Uh, so I'm like, you know what? Let me just cut out as much as I can. Because that way, um, for the future, this truck has already dropped two in the front two in the rear i'm going one extra inch in the rear so i know that one extra inch um that may end up being a problem uh so that's why i just removed all of that so when i even do go the lower inch i should be gold i shouldn't have anything to worry about so now at this point there's nothing left to uh stop from bolting in here it is it's bolted in and um uh, we'll think we're good to go um, And this thing man, it, it this thing is huge. This thing is beef. I mean, I know I already said it before but I mean shoot it's damn near six inches in diameter um, So one thing I'm gonna have to do that kind of got on my nerves a bit I'm gonna have to wipe that off. I probably should have waited for the freaking paint to dry before um, I painted I uh, put it up in there, but I just painted just to protect it from rust uh, for the time being. I need to get under here and do a whole lot. So I'm not stressing it too much because I will be back under here. But um, it's in. I put in a new uh, trans seal while I was at it because my other one was leaking. Uh, not super bad, but it was leaking enough to be uh, need to be addressed. So this section here, I should have loads of clearance. Um, I'm just going to put the jack under the rear, jack it up, and um, pretty much get the suspension under the load. And uh, see, and double check, make sure, and go for a test drive. Okay, I'm going to try to make this quick because the video has already been long enough as it is. But, I mean, a lot of information, a lot of information. So, um, it's in. Uh, went for a test drive, drove it, got on the highway had some vibration around 70 miles an hour and it it sucked so um i could feel it creeping i want to say around like 60 something a little past 60 but 60 but 70 you could definitely feel it so um did my homework you know still figuring it out like all right i'm quite sure there's something else i'm missing here and sure enough there i was um what i was missing was um with the way that the drive shaft is originally designed inside of the obs gmt 400 trucks um, the pinion angle is upward quite a bit because it's a two-piece shaft. So um, the problem is you can't have too extreme of an angle on your U-joints. So um, I pretty much had a drive shaft that might have been like, you know, on a, a, a slope, not too crazy of a slope. And my pinion was just down, well, facing up, actually. And that was too extreme of an angle. Um, so once you start to get the higher speeds, that's when problems like that start to show themselves. So what I had to do, and I'm not going to do it in this video because it's too much. I'm going to have to make another one. Um, I needed to replace my U-bolts anyway. Also, I had Caltrex on the way. And also, I needed to put pinion angle shims in my rear diff. So um, I went with a six-degree shim. Um, the, the install of those, it's not hard. It's not like super complicated. Um, for me, it was just time consuming because, of course, I got to clean crap up. I want to paint it. I want to make sure it looks decent, protected, all that crap. So um, what I did was once that pinion angle shim was installed, 
I was able to bring the rear diff angle um, to more of a reasonable angle. And that actually did make a difference, but it didn't fix the problem. So I still felt a vibration around 70. It was gone at the 60s period, but around 70s, I could still feel it kicking in. So um, I said, you know what? Let me take a shot in the dark. Maybe I screwed something up, which I probably did. When I lowered and put the weight of the truck on the ground before I cut that relief, those two lines that were rubbing on the bottom of the cab body, remember that? Yeah, um, I think that caused it to possibly throw it out of whack a bit because I actually threw the truck in reverse and then back, back, I reversed it and then I pulled forward. And the whole time I'm hearing like the, and I'm like, what the hell is that? Even my old lady sitting at the front door was like, what's that? And I'm like, oh shoot. Like I went up under there and looked, yeah, it was my dry shaft. So, so that's what I think caused the dry shaft to be off. Um, second time around was, you know, the whole drive shaft rubbing on the body being on the way to the car and yeah that definitely was not a good look so um found a guy um he was about an hour some change away he deals with aluminum shafts he did have a big enough machine able to uh check a drive shaft of that length and um took it to him and uh and when he checked it he was like yeah it was definitely out of whack he's like i don't understand how you would even been driving on this thing and i was like yeah so either way, um, got it straightened out. He threw a couple weights on each end and here I am doing like a hundred miles an hour and I'm completely fine. Still have room because once again, uh, critical speed of this shaft is probably like 125. And I kind of want to try to perfect it later down the line to see what I could do and what I could fit to go beyond that 125 an hour mark. But that's way down the line, but, um, it worked out, man. So here it is. It's smooth. Uh, it's cool. I don't even know who else, if anybody in existence, has a GMT 400 OBS truck with a one-piece drive shaft and can actually really get on it. So, yeah, here it is, man. So, I guess take it for what it is, and I'll see you on the next one.